<laughs> OMG, oh my god, the Itchy Monster is back again to make your life a living hell. I hope this video will be a guide to get your skin back to feeling normal again. Hi there, I'm Dr. Albert Chung and I'm your friendly proctologist, board certified one at that. And today I want to talk to you about restoring the skin on the outside of your anus. You know, we get that real fiery rash, that itch just doesn't want to go away. And here's some quick little home tips that I give to my patients even in my office to try out. And I hope it works for you. The first thing we need to do in any problem is assess the situation. We need to figure out what our baseline is. What are the problems or the physical signs that we see because we want to take photographs of it. Yes, put these photos in a very secure place, a hidden place on your phone. These are photos that will be very important for you because they're going to tell you whether you're making progress or not or whether new signs are coming about, right? Those are the things where we want to say, uh-oh, we are not getting anywhere by ourselves. We need to try something else or go see a physician. Another thing, you want to make the lighting consistent every time in your photo. So you don't want to depend on the sunlight coming through your window and shining on your butt cheeks. And then when you're checking your skin at night, it looks completely different. Use a flashlight, use a lamp, anything to make things the same from picture to picture. Now you've finished your photo shoot, you've got this beautiful collection of photos and you're thinking to yourself, gosh, there's got to be a way I can monetize this or maybe do a side gig? <laughs> no, of course not. But actually, a lot of my friends have told me, hey, Albert, you should really think about putting this content online. Like, what you get from your patients and stuff? It's like, dude, what are you talking about? That's called, like, being a pimp in my... <laughs> My patients are my prostitutes? Like, no, 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 can't do that, totally illegal. Anyway, getting back on topic, you may want to take several angles of your bottom end just because taking pictures of your anus straight on or your butt cheek in another direction might be helpful. You want to look at the condition of your skin. We're talking about color. We're talking about wetness. We're talking about wounds. Like, is the surface even? Are there bumps, welts, and the like? Now, if you've got redness of the skin, okay, that means there is inflammation there. But inflammation can come in different degrees. You know, it's like rash inflammation where there is no infection. Your body is just reacting to something it's pissed off about. And there's also infection. It's very hard to tell to someone who doesn't have the training in medicine or treating patients. And so if you have an infection, you'll know that the stuff won't get any better without antibiotics potentially. But most of the redness is because of wetness or a lot of rubbing or friction irritation. So the treatment plan that's coming up, we're gonna talk address those issues. If there are wounds on the outside of your skin, you're going to see some inconsistencies, right? The skin is usually like dull, kind of reflects light in a way that disperses it, kind of looks a little bit matte finish in a car paint for example, but wounds will have this break in the skin. There may be some shininess on the bottom of the wound. Wounds can be like razor thin, like somebody clawed at it, took a razor blade and cut it. They can also be like holes, punched out little graphics or designs, if you will. And those could all mean different things, or it can mean just that you've been scratching your butt all day long. But there are certain skin conditions, whether it's from a bacteria, even sexually transmitted, can also look like that as well. Next thing you want to look at is, of course, is the drainage, is it like watery wet or is it like yellow with pus or what is it, sticky, thick? You want to look at all these things because it may not just be a skin issue. It may be something coming from inside the anus like an abscess from the anus. Maybe there's mucus coming from the inside of your anus or even above from your rectum. These are all things that this video won't account for, but you want to be keeping that in mind because if you are not solving any of your issues with this video, for example, you want to seek medical help. In addition to looking at the skin around the anus, like that's like the buttocks area, you know that the anus in the center has a different skin pigment, right? That's for everybody. It usually gets a little bit darker or a little bit more intense, pinker, depending on your skin tone. But usually with the very inflamed skin of the anus, the skin folds look massive, meaning they look very, very um, rugged. 
they are thickened. They might even have a white haze type of look over it, like someone that needs exfoliation on their skin, like you're not, like there's something covering it. That may be because of long-standing irritation to your skin and it's developing a callus. Same thing with blisters on your hands, or excuse me, callus in your hands. The skin is getting thicker because it's trying to develop a hunchback armor to protect itself from our own hands. Pretty sad to think about totally defenseless and we're just massacring them. So now that we've established the baseline, we've examined our skin fully and we kind of have a really good idea of what our anus is looking like, we can then start our treatment and take pictures maybe every three days. Some people would want to do it every day, but a lot of these changes won't happen that quickly. I would say every three days is probably fair. Now for the do-it-yourself DIY home kit to solve an itchy butt. Number one rule you need to adopt is there will be no touching of your anus after you're done pooping. No more wipes after you poop. I don't care how soft your wipes or your baby wipes or tissue paper is. There is no such thing as frictionless, okay? It just does less damage than hard coarse toilet paper or paper towels but those wounds on your anus are so thin and so fragile, they will break apart. No more touching after you finish pooping. What do you have to do? Go in the shower and wash off. If you have a bidet, this will be the only exception. However, make sure that pressure on your bidet squirt gun is very, very, very low, which is why I suggest just going into the shower washing yourself off. You may put the soap on your bottom end or let the soap wash down there, but you cannot use any washcloth. You cannot use your hand and like scrub down there. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You can put some soap on your hand and kind of get it down in the bottom end area, but no more scrubbing at all. Sometimes soap is actually a little bit detrimental because it robs all of the oils from your skin which allow your skin to rub past each other and glide by each other. If you take those oils away, it gets really rubbery and squeaky down there, right? And if you've got a wound that's caught in that friction and that squeak, it can probably rip it right back open or peel off the scab that has just started to develop there. So I suggest really no soap is necessary, but do what you will, I ain't gonna stop you. Once you come out of the shower, you want to dab very, very gently with some dry toilet paper. You know, really, essentially just touch it onto your skin and then peel off there. And it's important because we're gonna apply some creams on there and we want those creams to adhere to our skin, not to the water droplets. You know, you've probably run into that situation where you put the creams on some wet skin and then it just sloughs off and the cream acts like it didn't do anything. The creams that I want you to put on is a zinc oxide based, okay? There are many, many on the market. I'm a fan of Desitin, what we use for babies. The zinc oxide creams are very helpful because they are very thick, um, they last a long time, and they provide lots of lubrication so our skin can slide past each other. Now with that Desitin, you may want to mix some other things with it. Another one cream you may try is some Benadryl cream. The Benadryl cream can be the maximum strength you get off the counter in your local drugstore or grocery store. And you can mix those two together and then apply just a very, very small dot on the center of your anus. If you have your skin is all red where the butt cheeks are touching each other, you can put some on there too, but I would suggest being very careful about that because this stuff gets everywhere once you start walking. So. The little goes a really long way with this stuff. The Benadryl is helpful because why it has anti-itch power in it. We want to lower that itching symptom so that we don't have to keep scratching ourselves, which would, again, cause more injury and more wounds. The Desitin is also a waterproof barrier, right? The word barrier cream is very important because then water or drainage or poop, what have you, will not be able to penetrate and get into the skin and cause infection, also cause more irritation, more moisture, you get the idea. I suggest applying those creams about two to three times a day, just depending on how active you are or how many showers you take a day. Maybe you wake up in the morning, you work out in the middle of the day, and then you wanna, you maybe go back to work and go to bed. 
Another helpful cream is called hydrocortisone, and this is very commonly prescribed for hemorrhoids. It is a steroid cream, which means it decreases inflammation, and it can also decrease the itching that is coming from the irritation of our skin. So you can also add a small dot of hydrocortisone and apply this mixture on your skin. The steroids, however, can have a side effect of thinning out your skin. What that means in the anus is it makes it more vulnerable to injuries when you are touching your skin. And that can create more itching. So you're kind of putting yourself backwards into recovery. I highly suggest you only use hydrocortisone no more than 14 days. Definitely stop it if you're feeling better. Now, nighttime seems to be a very, very tough part of the day for many to deal with because many people feel like their itching is actually worse when they're lying down and sleeping. And I think that's because our butt cheeks are kind of smashed next to each other when we're lying down on our side or our back. I think that kind of rubs the wounds the wrong way. And the increased moisture that can't get out and dry off, I think that's most likely the reason why. So to combat this, I highly suggest putting that mixture of creams on right before bed, a fresh layer. And then thinking about using Benadryl tablets. Benadryl is an anti-itching medication, but it also has a side effect of being a sedative, helping us to go to sleep. Warning here, please make sure it is okay for you to use Benadryl with your medications, with your body, check with your physician first. And be sure to know how much Benadryl is safe for you. Definitely consult your surgeon. This can be harmful depending on what medications you're on or if you drink alcohol, etc, etc. Please be careful. Now you've got the whole recipe and so you're thinking, Okay Dr. Chung, if I get started with this, I follow your directions carefully. About how long should I wait before things get better? Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty amazing, but it should start working from three to seven days. You'll start to notice some difference. I definitely tell everyone to kind of keep a commitment going for two weeks to really try this out. But honestly, vast, vast majority of people find that they get better within a week. So if you're one of those people that get better, hold on to this routine for 30 solid days. Again, the hydrocortisone stop in 14 days. Can you stop the Benadryl? Absolutely. If you're not itchy at night anymore, don't take the tablet. Don't use the Benadryl cream anymore. Just use the desitin. Another caveat here too is desitin or creams on your skin 24 seven can cause irritation. And even though it didn't cause irritation in the beginning, you may start to notice some more or a different rash show up. I think that's because the skin needs to breathe every once in a while. So if you get that issue, or you know you do, give yourself or your bottom end a cream holiday once in a while, whether it's eight hours or maybe a full day. It's not going to really set you back very far. But once you start noticing that things are getting better, yeah, give it a cream holiday during the daytime and then at nighttime when you really want it to protect your skin, reapply it again. At the end of 30 days is when I would suggest people weaning off of the creams. If you want to do it maybe once a day, or maybe you want to do it every other day, do that until you come off. But you're still not allowed to wipe yet until six weeks. The first stage of wound maturation happens at six weeks. So now that we have some strength in the wounds that are healed, this is when you can start wiping. But, 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 reconsider the way you wipe. Be different, be more gentle. This way your skin will last and be healthy for longer, be happy with you, and this kind of problem will be a lot less likely. So I hope this video was helpful. This DIY kit for fixing your itchy butt works for you. Thank you so much for being here. You take care, I'll see you next time, bye-bye.